Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry for the little delay in uh, videos getting out. Uh, I've been kind of experimenting around. I got a new uh, got a new camera. I got me a GoPro finally, so no more really crappy video quality being shot on my phone. And I'm also editing now with actual legitimate editing software on my laptop. So hopefully. You know, you guys will notice a little bit of a difference in the video quality. And again, I apologize for the little delay in uh, video releases, but you know, I've finally decided to take the plunge and make sure that the videos I do put out are top quality. So one big question that I get a lot, and it's from new players, it's from players who've played a while, whose style has changed a little bit, um, is what to put in my bag. Uh, you know, you can get on YouTube and search up disc golf in the bag videos all day. And you can sit there for hours and hours and hours and continually watch pros videos. But that pro might not play like you, that pro might not throw like you, that pro might throw 300 feet further. So what might be good for their bag, you know, probably won't be good for your bag. So today uh, I want to launch the first part of a little mini series of how to properly build your disc golf bag. So the bread and butter, what we need to start with is the putters. And first and foremost, you have to have a good, reliable putter that you use anywhere inside circle two. So anywhere out to, you know, 70 feet, this needs to be your go-to putter. Uh, it should be the same no matter if it's from 10 feet 30 feet, 70 feet, this right here should feel comfortable for you no matter what distance, as long as it's pretty well inside the circle too. Outside of that, we will kind of get into a little more in a second, but this episode, I really wanna just focus on the putters. So, your main putting putter, like I said, anything inside 70 feet should be something comfortable in the hand. First big question you've got to ask yourself when deciding what putter to use is do you want a bead or do you want beadless? And that's personal preference. You can find a beaded putter. If you like a certain putter, you like the way it flies, but you don't like that it has a bead, you can find a beadless putter that'll fly exactly the same. Trust me, there are 100,000 different you know, discs out there for you and different plastic types that you, know, you can find whatever flight and style of, or whatever kind of flight you desire out of your putt, whether it's beaded or beadless and whatever different infinite combinations of rim shape size, you know, whether it's narrow, deep, all of that. So for that, um, the biggest question you got to ask yourself is, do you like a beaded putter or beadless putter? Um, it's pretty well split 50-50. I know probably the most popular putter for any, you know, any disc golfer is arguably the Discmania P2, and it's a beadless putter. So we'll get into that. Uh, and it's like we'll actually just kind of touch on it because I don't want to go too far in the detail. I want this to be, a, you know, not a super long video. So for the putter that you putt with mainly, it's just got to feel really comfortable in the hand. Um, this should be something because confidence is key whenever you're putting. If you're not confident in your putt, you're going to miss your putts. If you're confident in your putt, 90% of the time you're going to hit some really cool things that you didn't think you'd be able to hit. So you've just got to hold it see how it feels, see where the grip lines up, and see whether you want a beadless or a beaded putter. For the stability of the putter, I wouldn't go anything too crazy understable or too crazy overstable, but kind of hang out right in the middle line of stability and maybe venture a little ways either or, depending on whether you're push putt, spin putt, whether you have a lot of loft and float, or whether you just kind of jab it straight at the basket. And this is all gonna be trial and error. I cannot even begin to really go into every single type of putter for every single type of putt, I would be here for the next three hours trying to uh, trying to explain that. So not really what I want to do today. Uh, I got a few other things I want to do, so can't be spending all my time trying to, you know, harp on that. So find you a putter that's comfortable in the hand, that fits the stability of your putt style, and then just practice with it and get good with it. Uh, as far as plastic goes, typically, I've always been in the school of thought that a really grippy putter is going to be superior because if you miss, it grabs the ground, it doesn't slide or anything like that, and it grips the chains a little better. But some people don't like that flexibility, that grippiness, and things like that, so they'll stick with a stiffer putter like 
a P line or KC Pro uh, material or even a D line or DX material, things like that. And you know, that might suit you better. You know, that might suit your putting style better. And don't get me wrong, just because the plastic is hard and kind of slick and stiff doesn't mean it's not going to grab the chains. So just find the disc that suits you best. And this is mainly trial and error because everyone's testimonials for putters is going to be for them personally. Myself, I like the James Conrad Glow Pro AVR. This is my go-to putter anywhere inside of 80 to 90 feet. Actually, pretty well inside of 100 feet, you will probably find me jump putting this. So, you know, that's this is my personal preference. I like the grippy plastic. I like the beaded uh, putter. I like the flat to somewhat puddle top on that. So, this is just me. Now, let's get into the little more fun aspect of putters, and that's your throwing putters. Uh, for what you should have in the bag, a lot of times for a main throwing putter, a lot of people just use another duplicate of their main putting putter or they use their backup putting putter for their upshots and things like that. I like to keep two main putting putters, mainly for putting practice before a round or before a tournament, or in case, God forbid, I lose one in the water or you know I take a big chunk out of the rim on the band or the cage or something like that. You know, you never know when something like that can happen and, you know, your main putting putter is probably the most crucial disc in your bag to have a duplicate of. So you can either stick with another one of that mold for your main upshots, or you can venture out into different molds. Um, I have the P2 for my main driving and upshot putter, and I'm kind of experimenting around with a couple different plastic types of this. So normally I would have just one, but I have a P-Line P2, which is a little stiffer and a little more slick, can handle a little more torque than the D-Line. And the D-Line is just a little bit softer. It's still fairly rigid and a little stiff, but it has a little better grip, especially when the sun shines and it gets pretty hot. It actually gets fairly grippy. So the P-Line or the D-Line, uh, either one, honestly, I'm just kind of fiddling with them both, seeing which one I end up liking to stick in the bag. But normally you would just pick one putter or uh, you know one kind of neutral maybe slightly overstable putter to use as your main driving or upshot disc as for that like I said normally I'd only have one so I'm only setting one up over here then a fairly understable and this one is kind of a uh, this one is kind of optional I like to have an understable uh, putter in my bag just because he's coming back Hold on. The weather's nice. People are tired of being cooped up in their houses and they're riding four wheelers today. And I can't say I blame them. It's a good day outside. So I like to have an understable putter in my bag for touchy shots, Anheuser's, uh, tailwind putts, uh, tailwind approaches, things like that, or just really, really nice shot shapes or being able to shape a shot up and down a fairway really well especially in the woods. For that, I like to use the Star Sonic. Uh, this is just like a catch disc. You can really manipulate this thing to do whatever you want. So this right here is a very, very invaluable disc in my bag. And then an overstable putter. You probably do want one of these in your bag. This right here isn't so much optional, or you could use a slower approach mid-range. I used to use the Gator for this shot, but recently I've been fiddling around with the Infinite Disc C-Blend Ruin. Uh, this is a low profile, you know, really, really overstable approach disc. So the reason you want these is because, you know, you never really know, especially on the short game, uh, anywhere inside of 150 feet is when your putters are gonna shine and that's what's gonna save you the most strokes. If you can get up and down from 150 feet, no matter where you're at on a course or what course, you're going to save a lot of strokes. So that's typically where a lot of strokes get racked up is the fact of people either can't make it up and down or they struggle on the putting green. So, some things to look at for your main throwing putters. We've already went over the putting putters, so here's what to look for in your main throwing putters. In your, just your main upshot driving putter, which in my case is the P2, uh, I want something that, again, feels very comfortable in the hand. It's gonna get a good clean release every single time and can handle a good bit of torque, but if I really rip into it, will flip over. That's kind of what I'm looking for. And just this classic P2 
P-line P2 or D-line P2, but just the P2 in general, uh, can actually hold up to a lot of torque. So I can really, really get on this thing, push it in upwards of 250 feet, sometimes pushing 300, and I have been able to get a few of my AVRs, uh, especially those James Conrad AVRs, I've been able to get those pretty far. I think my furthest throw with one is about 350 with a solid tailwind. I just absolutely let loose on one and it just flew. So this right here is what you're going to use for your main upshots and short drives off the tee. So it's going to need to be controllable and this right here needs to be the disc in your bag that you can manipulate to any line. Whether you need it to hold a hyzer, whether you need it to turn over or just hold dead straight, this is the disc that you need to pull out for that shot. So like I said, anywhere typically within 150, maybe 200 feet, don't know how far you throw a putter, but this is the disc that you need to do that or do with that. You kind of want a mid stability to slightly overstable. So you don't want something that's going to flip over or anything like that or that you can't trust into a little bit of a headwind. Uh, this right here I can trust into some very mild to maybe moderate headwinds. Um, I don't really fool around with this too much if the headwind gets really stiff or really strong or is really swirling. I'll just pick up an overstable disc and go with that. But I can trust this in almost any kind of whether headwind, tailwind, crosswind, as long as it's mild to mildly moderate wind, this will hold up to it. Now something to look at for your understable putter is, like I said when I pulled it out, is being able to manipulate it. This right here, I can manipulate any kind of shot shape to fit this. So that's pretty well what I use it for. And typically I use this actually for a lot of just turnover or if I'm in the woods scrambling, I can't really get a forehand out, but I need a left to right moving shot. I'll just touch this on a little bit of a hazard and it just floats. Uh, you're gonna want your understable disc to be kind of glidey because you don't wanna have to put a lot of force behind it to get it to hold a turnover for very long because this right here, the bread and butter shot of this disc is going to be being able to hold a turnover for a good amount of time and be able to just continually float to the right. So you don't wanna to have to put a lot of force to keep it turned over. So having a glidey putter, something that you can put on a little bit of an Anheuser and just really touch and focus on hitting your line and just letting the disc continually float, that's what this is gonna be good for. So that's something you need to look for in this disc. Uh, another disc that I used to throw that fit this slot very well was the Mirage, actually. It was really understable, had a little bit of you know, good, decent glide to it, and would just continually float, and that's really what I liked about it. And for your overstable, overstable disc, uh, you're gonna want something low profile. You, know, you don't want anything super domey with this, um, but this is going to need to be comfortable forehand and backhand. If you don't know how to forehand a putter yet, you definitely need to. It will save a lot of strokes in your game, and you'll be able to forehand anything if you can forehand a putter. So, you're gonna want something low profile and is comfortable to forehand. Uh, you don't want domey because you want that to be able to fit well in the hand, as well as being able to cut through the wind. This is my go-to wind fighter for short game. So I like to be able to really put a lot of power into this and know that it's going to fight through the wind and having that low flat top is going to help it cut through that wind even more and not flip over or glide too much on me. Uh, you don't want a super glidey overstable putter. You, this right here is the disc that you want to pull out when you need something to just get out of your hand and hit the ground right where you want it to. And another four wheeler. Okay, that was a pickup truck, not a four wheeler, my bad. So that's kind of what you're wanting in an overstable disc. And for this one, I would actually go with a premium plastic because it's going to get beat up. You know, you're going to be coming in on a lot of hyzers and you're going to put a lot of force into this on your shots and things like that. You don't want it getting too beat up and flippy on you. So, that's pretty well what you want to look at for your putters. Um, and typically, you know, I carry five putters in my bag. I carry my two putting putters. I carry, you know, my main driving putter. I carry my understable and I carry my overstable. Right now, like I said, I have the extra one in there, but that's just because I'm experimenting with plastic types and trying to figure out what works best for me. So, uh, all in all, that's basically uh, your recap of what you want as far as putters in your bag. And yeah, that's, that's pretty well it. I don't think I really 
gloss over too many other things. If you're thinking of anything that I'm missing, comment below and let me know. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned into the channel because the next one I'm going to be going into the mid ranges. And this right here is another very, very crucial and vital step of, you know, building a disc golf bag is you need, you know, good solid mid ranges, especially if you play in the woods. So, guys, like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, uh, hit that like button anyway. Comment below if you think I missed anything. Comment below if you want to see me uh, covering any more topics. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram. Find me on Facebook. Things like that. And everybody stay safe out there. Keep an eye out for the mid-range episode coming out very soon. And I will see you guys on the next one.